Shalom, shalom. Giving honor and praise to the creator and the maker of heaven and earth. I'm going to take this time out now to present a particular subject matter. This is concerning the issue of procreation, marriage, rights, and so forth and so on. Very brief, however, according to the biblical stance of it. Now, when I say rights, I mean R I. T E S, which means like the ceremonies and so forth and so on. Let's start, brothers and sisters, in Genesis chapter 127, right? And we read, And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now keep your hand right there. Let's go to Genesis chapter 5, verse 2, so we can gain an understanding concerning this kind of matter. It says, Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. So what's being stated, brothers and sisters, is that when the Most High made male and female, that's when he made Adam. Adam in Hebrew means mortal, M-O-R-T-A-L, and it also means human. So let that be noted and understood. All right. So that's very important to be noted concerning that aspect. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter nine, verse six, which says, Whoso sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For the image of God made he man. So man, that is to say Adam or human, was made in the image of the most high. Very important. All right. Now. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28, it says this, And God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, one of the things to point out is when it says replenish the earth, the Hebrew word that's used there is the Hebrew word mala or mila, which means to fill. It doesn't mean to replenish. The Hebrew word for replenish is the Hebrew word kalaf. So that word is not there in the Hebrew in Genesis 1.28. So it should read shall fill the earth. Or commanded them to fill the earth, not replenish the earth. So let that be noted. All right? One of the things they were told is that they were to just do that. To be fruitful and to multiply. Very important to let that be noted. Let's go to Genesis 2 verse 7. It says, Then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, 18. It says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. Now, let's go into Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept, and he took out one of his ribs, and closed up the place with flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now, one of the things I wanted to sit there and point out is a couple of things. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. When it says man, the Hebrew word that's you, there is the Hebrew word ish. So there's Adam, which means mortal or man or human. And then there's ish that is part of Adam. So under the understanding or under the under the issue of the umbrella of Adam, you get ish, which is man. Then you get isha, which is woman. So let that be noted. Even in uh, what they call modern science, they call it to where the male has the... XY chromosome and the female has the X, X chromosome. So let that be noted and understood. Now, getting back into this portion right here. In Genesis 2.18, 
And in Genesis chapter two, verse seven, some people, unfortunately, who lack understanding, they say that Genesis has two creation stories, one in Genesis chapter one and one in Genesis chapter two. But it's not two different creation stories. What it is, is just like if you watch a movie and let's say there's an intermission in between part A and part B of the movie. But when you get into part B, it explains part A more in depth. That is what's going on here in Genesis chapter two. Genesis chapter 1 is just giving you the rundown and Genesis chapter 2 is giving you the details of how the events that happened in part 1 took place. So let that be noted. All right, now, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, once again. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. Now, one of the main purposes, as we see here, that the Most High made the woman was so man will not be alone. So, let that be noted. The book of Psalms, when it says how my eyes wander upon the works of the Most High and how great and wonderful the works of the Heavenly Father is, women is part of the works of the Most High. So, let that be noted and understood. When you go to Proverbs in your own time, 18 verse 22, it says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains the favor of the Most High. So let that be noted and understood. Now this right here in Genesis shows you that the first wedding happened. Yah, the father, the most high, made a woman and brought her unto the man. The father gives away his daughter to what would be later on his son-in-law. Very important to let that be noted and understood. Another thing emphatically is that we see right here. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept and he took one of his ribs. Now the Hebrew word that's used there when it says ribs is the Hebrew word zaleh. The Hebrew word zaleh means side because your woman is your side partner. To use it in layman terms, your sidekick. Bone of bones and flesh of flesh. And they become one. That's the issue in the situation with that. So now, if we understand that, let's go back, if you will, to Genesis 1, 27. It says, and God created man in his own image. In the image of the Most High created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, when it says man in Genesis 1, 27, that is the Hebrew word Adam, which means human. And out of that came what we call today Later on in Ish, which is a man, and then the Isha, which is a woman. So let that be noted and understood. All right. Now, let's go, if you will, brothers and sisters, to the book of Joshua. I like to use this periodically. The book of Joshua, we're going to go to chapter 5, 14. And it reads as follows, so we can gain some understanding concerning this kind of matter. All right. We are in the book of Joshua 5, 14. And the Lord said unto Noah, Take unto thee a wife, and beget children, for I have seen thee righteous before me in this generation. And thou shalt raise up seed, and thy children with thee in the midst of the earth. And Noah went and took a wife, and he chose Naamah, the daughter of Enoch. And she was 580 years old. And Noah was 498 years old. When he took Naama for wife. Now. Remembering this portion right here is very important too. Because we still see a male and a female. And they making people. Okay. Very important because in this society. In this country they recently. In their own way. Gave sanction that a man. A male can marry another male. And that a female one who was born with the XX chromosome can be married to another human being who also has the XX chromosome. And we're going to see what's going to become of that in this society. All right, now, if we will, brothers and sisters, I'd like to go to the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 3, so we can gain some understanding concerning this. We are in 1 Chronicles, the 14th chapter, Starting in the third verse. And it says. And David took 
more wives at Jerusalem. And David begot more sons and daughters. And these were the names of the children whom he had in Jerusalem. Shamua and Shobab and Atan and Solomon and Ebhar and Elishua and El Pelet and Noga and Epheg and Yaphia and Elishama and Billy Ada and Eliphelet. So this right here was just a particular case just showing that you had Adam, Eve, they had children. Then you had generations later, Noah, his wife, and they had children. And generations later, you had David and his wife and they had children. Now, remembering all of that, very important in this particular presentation. Now, let's go, if you will, brothers and sisters, into this book right here. This book right here called the Apocrypha, right? We're going to go in here, the Wisdom of Solomon. All right, so that way we can gain some understanding concerning this. We will go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 1. All right, and it reads as follows. I myself am also am a mortal man, like unto all, and the offspring of him that was first made in the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man, and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is like nature. And the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. So what's being stated emphatically, it says what? I myself am a mortal man like unto all and the offspring of him that was first made in the earth. So we understand the Hebrew culture, the earth, which is Aretz, or the Hebrew word Adama, which is ground, because Adam was taken from the Adama. You understand? It says that what? And the offspring of him that was first made in the earth. So you have from Adam and his wife, then later on Noah and his wife, then later on David and his wife, then we see Solomon saying that he is a descendant of the one that was first made in the earth. So let that be noted and understood. All right? Now, very important because now when we go into seeing how the other aspect in this society goes, let's go to the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 5. It says, matter of fact, let's go to, first, let's go to um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 1. For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. Therefore, chastenest thou them by little and little that offend. And one is them by putting them in remembrance wherein they have offended, that leaving their wickedness, that they may believe on thee, O Most High. For it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers both those old inhabitants of thy holy land, whom thou hatest for doing most odious works of witchcraft and wicked sacrifices, and also those merciless murderers of children and devourers of man's flesh, and the feast of blood, with their priests, out of the midst of their idolatrous crew, and the parents that killed with their own hands, souls destitute of help. So what's read right here in the Wisdom of Solomon, verses 5 and verse 6, and today is what you will call giving your children over an abortion. Because that's what they do. It says what? And also those merciless murderers of children did jump to verse 6. With their priests out of the midst of their idolatrous crew. That's exactly what they do because their doctors today are their priests. And the sacrifices that they deal with when a woman, heaven forbid, gets an abortion, they have her strapped up. They put the vacuum by where her vagina area is. They suck the child out. It's very bloody. They scrape out her uterus and everything like that or the remains of the child that's within her in within her uterus, they put it inside of a jar and they go into another place with it. And who knows what they're doing with that kind of stuff. You understand? So this right here just goes to show you that is not a good thing. What we call abortion of today is not a good thing. That is not the intention that the Most High had when he caused men and women to make more people. Let's go, if we will, to conclude this part out. Psalms 127, we're going to start in verse 3, all right? So we can gain understanding concerning this kind of matter. We're in the book of Psalms 127, 
we are in the very third verse. And it reads, brothers and sisters, as follows, so we can gain an understanding. Alrighty. It says, Lo, children are the inheritance of the Most High. The fruit of the womb is a reward. So the children belong to the Heavenly Father. You don't have the right to murder the babies. Shalom. Part two coming up.